um, around the globe series and spotlight on Germany. We think that timing is quite excellent with this Monday being the key milestone on the journey to recovery. And that is US reopening its, its borders to international travelers, 33 countries around the globe and Germany certainly being part of it. So we could not um, think of a better time to, to bring one of the key markets for California um, consistently in a top five overseas markets. And as I said, that's, um, that's Germany. So we have assembled a great uh, lineup of speakers that will be um, speaking to a few different areas of their own expertise. Um, you're gonna get an update on German market and what consumer is expecting in terms of travel in post pandemic world. Um, we'll be sharing some insight on airlift and what airlines are doing to cater to German traveler. We are certainly gonna hear from a journalist um, one of the key journalists in German market, I should say, um, and a little bit more about this very competitive um, landscape. We'll learn a little bit more about travel trade landscape. And last but not least, we have um, two research um, presentations, one our very own, um, kind of comparing um, Germany to the rest of the, the suite of international markets. And then we have an in-market research expertise as well. So um, exciting content. Um, Germany is a market that has been in our portfolio for over 25 years. And I can't think of a better person to bring to you than Martin Walter, um, head of our agency MSI in Germany, who's gonna start um, the presentation with overall landscape and market conditions. So over to you, Martin. Many thanks, Leona, and welcome everyone to our Germany update and information session. First of all, I also want to thank our guest speakers and experts for sharing their knowledge and updates with us. And since I do not want to steal their content too much and information, I am briefly focusing on some general updates in respect to the state of our market, as well as our activities during the past weeks and in the coming months. Let's start with the Germany update. Germany has actually managed to get through this crisis with a very robust economy, but also a lot of financial support from our government. Some of which has started last summer and believe it or not, continues until the end of this year. Our GDP forecast for next year is very positive and our unemployment rate has not gone up much at all. While the current COVID infection rates are going up at this point in time, we continue to have a lot of, or we continue to have very high vaccination rates. And by now, almost 70% of all Germans are fully vaccinated, which also means that way over 80% of all adults have received a full vaccination. Germans continue to travel and have done so very much in the past month and also last year. And we, we are very much used to rules and regulations such as electronic vaccination proof and testing requirements. And now on to our office and the current activities. We started up our proactive work on September 1st and have since been very much engaged with the travel trade, airlines and media partners. The plans for the coming month include several key account calls, travel trade training activities, a large multi-layer campaign with Lufthansa, media and influencer trips to California, and a multifaceted social media campaign. In case of any questions and or interest to work with us on these campaigns, please check our Visit California Industry website in the Partner Opportunities and Co-op section. A very important fact to remember for the coming weeks and months, please. Many of our long haul destination competitors will not be open for several months to come, if not half a year or longer, while Germans can travel to California and the US as of next week. We will for sure take advantage of this unique situation and benefit in a major way. We should, however, not take things for granted. The competition is very proactive and fierce. Now is the time to invest into Europe and use the next six months at least to gain substantial market share from all over Europe. Exciting times are ahead of us. 
Next week, Monday, the border will be open again. And now I am passing it back to Leona. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. Um, as you said, German Traveler is definitely incredibly resilient. Traveler will be relying on this market um, quite heavily. And as you said, um, Europe might, might represent the short-term opportunity for California, where um, some, some beloved destinations for Germans and Europeans are still not fully open or the opening protocols are quite um, cumbersome. So we're hoping that um, by us investing and kind of working collaborative, collaboratively with the industry, the European market will be able to steal some market share in a short term um, timeframe. So anyway, next up, a research panel. Um, research and insights are near and dear to our heart, definitely guiding our strategy moving forward. And we're gonna, uh, we have two panelists. We're gonna start our presentation with Graham G, research manager at Visit California who, like I said, will give you um, an overview of international market reopening indicators, some key insights and in how Germany fits into our international portfolio. And then Ulf Sontag, um, head of market research and NIT, um, he'll share with us an overview of new consumer trends among German travelers. So over to you, Graham and Ulf. Thank you, Leona. Good morning. Today I'm going to present an overview of how Visit California is looking at international travel recovery across California's 14 global markets, with of course a spotlight on Germany. First, let us look back at pre-pandemic times and review the overall impact of international visitation to California, and then specifically at the German market. Those of you who have attended our previous spotlight presentations will already be familiar with this slide as we share it to establish the importance of international tourism to California. Pre-pandemic, international visitation represent, represented just slightly more than 6% of trips to the state, but in terms of spend, the share was nearly 18%, or three times the share of trips. In 2019, that represented 28 billion of the 145 billion visitor spending in the state. And of course, you can see on the right, the international visitation is particularly important to the gateway regions of the state, which account for 77% of the total international spend. Now let's look at German pre-pandemic pre visitation stats. In terms of visitation, Germany represented 934 million in visitor spending in 2019, 429,000 trips, and a 20.8 market share of US trips. In terms of airlift, California had 54 weekly nonstop flights, 19,000 weekly nonstop seats, and three gateway destinations, Los Angeles, San Diego, and San Francisco. And in terms of travel in the state, German travelers stayed an average of 10.1 nights, spent an average of $2,175 per trip, and 13% of trips were with kids in the top three of Visit California markets. So California is a big destination for the family traveler. We will look at many of these figures in context of other Visit California markets and where we are currently and where we expect to be in the future. So as we have from the beginning of the pandemic, we're evaluating domestic and international opportunity through three lenses, economic, public health and consumer. And I'll touch on each of these briefly in the presentation. So let's start with the economic lens. Visit California is conducting quarterly visitation and spend forecasts with tourism economics. And this slide shows the overall international spend forecast over the last three forecasts, including an index to 2019 spending. You can see the most recent September forecast for international for 2021 was lowered from earlier forecasts to 18% to that 2019 levels. As borders remain closed, most of the year, and international and non-essential travel was, was non-existent. However, the good news is you can see that we now expect recovery to take place at a faster pace, and recovery to 2019 levels of spending is forecast to take place by 2024, slightly earlier than the forecast in previous estimates. In terms of Germany specifically, after the sharp declines for 2020 and 2021, we will see a strong rebound in spend in 2022 to 456 million, and that full recovery will be achieved by 2024. Relative to Visit California's other European priority markets, the recovery legs slightly to France and UK. And that difference is a result of the fact that the forecast is based on macroeconomic factors in each market, including GDP, savings, inflation, employment. And the slower rate of Germany, the slower rate of recovery for Germany is based on a GDP growth estimate, which is positive, but slightly lower relative to UK and France. We'll continue to monitor with our quarterly updates, which you can find on the Visit California industry site. Now, through the pandemic, we know that urban gateways have been particularly hard hit due to the loss of both international and group business travel. This slide shows forecast visitation numbers for the three gateway cities from tourism economics global, global city travel. 
And we can see the critical role that German visitors will play in urban recovery in the state. By the time of full recovery, recovery in 2024, Germany will be the number three origin market for San Francisco among all overseas visitors, and the number two origin market of overseas visitors to San Diego. And while lower share visitors to Los Angeles, Germans will represent a significant 244,000 visitors, nearly equal to the number of visitors to San Francisco. Now, several, several lagging economic metrics that we're monitoring on a regular basis include arrivals and airlift to California. This next slide shows NTTO non-resident arrivals at California's ports of entry in the month of September. Not surprising though, September we have seen very suppressed arrival numbers across nearly all Visit California's markets with the exception of Mexico. German arrivals were 94% below 2019 arrivals for the month. In terms of airlift, it's a similar story, but we're now starting to see some improvement in terms of monthly nonstop flights and seats to California across many markets. As of September, there were 51,000 nonstop seats to California from Germany, which was 45% down from 2019. And relative to the UK and France, airlift to California from Germany has started to recover at a slightly faster rate. In fact, on this next slide, when we look at the trend on seats, Germany has steadily increased month over month. In August, there was a 10% increase in the number of seats and another 2% increase in September. An even brighter spot is looking at booking data. We are tracking air bookings for future travel to California via Ford Keys. And since the week of September 20th, when the announcement on the November border reopening was made, we've seen exponential growth in the number of air tickets booked to California across Visit California's five priority markets, including Germany. And relative to the week prior to the announcement, there was a, over a 400% increase in the number of tickets booked, indicating a strong pent up demand for travel to California. However, these weekly numbers are still approximately 30% down from 2019 weekly figures, but the surge is certainly welcome news. Uh, now, from a public health perspective, this, the news is not as positive here. The, this chart looks at seven day case rates per capita. We do know there are significant differences in data quality across reporting markets, but based on the most recent figure, Germany's seven day incidence is 168, which puts it behind the UK in terms of markets with the highest reported case rates. And compared to the prior month, Germany had the largest increase in case rates and is at the start of a fourth wave. We also track testing per case to understand how well reported the case data is and in particular in a particular market and whether the infrastructure is in place to monitor outbreaks. And nine, Germany is at the lower end of most of our markets. Um, and reflects that Germany has undone some of the testing infrastructure that was in place early in the pandemic. But on this next slide, in terms of vaccination rates, we have much better news to report as there are strong rates of vaccination across the board for Visit California markets. 11 out of 14 are above 70%. Germany did its trail slightly at 69% of the population with at least one dose as of the end of October. This is attributed partly to the lack of vaccination mandates in the country and stronger resistance to getting vaccinated among those not yet vaccinated. However, overall, these are very positive numbers as we approach, approach the border reopening for vaccinated travelers. And last, we turn to the consumer sentiment. From Brand USA, we are tracking the intent to visit the US. We compare intent to visit from September, which was pre-border announcement, to pre-pandemic levels. German intent to visit the US has remained stable and was at 15% in September, slightly increasing even. While we've seen some drop off in a few markets, we've seen this trend of stable intent to visit in other European markets, as well as indicating that California will continue to be an attractive destination to the European traveler. Now, Visit California has conducted proprietary research in five international markets, and we'll be expanding the scope to nine markets in December, which will include Germany. And this slide is really a preview of what will be, able, what will be available to the industry, and we can look today at at France and UK as comparable markets. And we found that intent to visit California was the same or it increased slightly relative to pre-pandemic levels in these markets, aligned to the results we saw with the brand USA study where Germany also had comparable results to pre-pandemic levels. Again, we'll be sharing the results specific to Germany in, uh, in January. So that concludes Visit California research. And if I had to leave you with three takeaways, I'd say you know, from German visitor spending, we'll start to see a rebound in 2022 and be back to pre-pandemic levels in 2024. Infrastructure is coming back, including demand via future air bookings. And we are seeing a fourth wave of cases, but that may be just a short-term challenge because overall vaccination rates are strong and combined with pre-pandemic levels of consumer intent to visit we should be seeing strong consumer demand from the German market. So now I'd like to turn it over to Ulf. Yeah, thank you, Graham. That's great. And you're also uh, impressively on time. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I tried to cope with this. So uh, yeah, good morning, California. 
we change perspective now and look in a little bit detail um, on the German market as such. And before jumping into the data, a little bit where the data is from. It's from our riser analyse, which means uh, travel analysis, um, a study, survey-based study that's out there since 1970 and uh, looking for um, tourism demand, but also a lot about uh, attitudes, behaviours, interests, so what people want to do. So we, we try to look a little bit in the future with this. And during the pandemic, we have um, like uh, enlarged our um, like number of interviews, not the number of interviews, but the um frequency of interviews so that we kept a quite close look on how is the especially the attitude and the desire to travel in germany and looking at this first a little bit also the glimpse back and forward um next slide please um on what was pre-pandemic and what is now and probably will be in the next years we are coming from a market uh, which has uh, 70 plus million trips uh, five plus days most of them going abroad, strong, quite strong um, position of long haul markets and within the long haul markets, US was one of the main destinations. Um, now, as you heard from uh, Martin, the Germans still kept traveling. Um, a lot of the travel uh, went into uh, Germany itself. So domestic, still 50 to 60% went abroad. Long haul was last year and this year almost non-existent. And uh, last year it was only existing because we had two normal months at the beginning, which means almost zero US. And we also agree with the, like, the recovery speed that we have heard from Graham that probably will we'll see um, a rise in the market next year, but probably with a focus on Germany and uh, European markets and then a recovery of the uh, long haul markets and US probably in uh, 23, uh, 24. Um, now looking or trying to find this, uh, this way on where are we standing now and uh, how is the outlook for California or on the German market. And we see um, that the Germans feel that the pandemic has not changed a lot in their um, economic situation. So we have stability in how they perceive their personal uh, economic situation and we know this is very important and this is really something that uh, our politicians have managed to do we heard from martin uh, we didn't have a increase in um, unemployment gdp is up and this shows also in this very important sentiment of the people um, when we move on more uh, to travel related uh, issues we see on the next slide um, that what people are doing or wanting to do in their holidays motivations is escaping from daily routine they're looking for sun and warmth relaxation fun amusement actually things all the things you can do in california i think and this is on the same high level as it has been before it's on the same ranking as it has been before and like the uh, volume or the the percentages are even higher than before so we we interpret this as the desire for travel and why to travel is even higher um during uh, pandemic times when not everything was possible and the same goes for um, the types of holidays that people want to do in the next three years. So we have beach, relaxing, family, but already then city. And we were discussing this in the when we prepared this presentation that this, I think, also a good sign for your gateways uh, cities. So um, the Germans are not afraid of going in the cities. It's still on their mental maps and on their desires to do. When we then look at the next slide, um, we see we're getting a little bit focused now on uh, do they really want to travel even in pandemic times? And this is uh, data now from September 21 compared with um, a couple of our measurements we took during the pandemic, but also the first one which we took uh, right before the pandemic. So do they think they have the money to travel in the next 12 months? Do they think they have the time to travel in the next 12 months? And do they have the desire to travel? And here we can also see the levels are all, they never went really down the rock bottom somewhere. So people always wanted to travel and had the means to travel. They just didn't have the possibilities. Um, so the outlook is basically as good um, as it was uh, pre-pandemic. So this is something to count on. Of course, when we look at the next slide, we see that uh, COVID will remain a challenge in the near future. So it gives us uncertainty um, in terms of our planning and where to go. Uh, it will affect uh, the booking, making it more short term and decisions more short term. We have a higher need for um, information 
we, the consumers, have to be more flexible, but we also expect from the industry to be more flexible. Um, and we also have this feeling now a little bit, uh, we're in the same boat. So we want to travel and the industry wants to make this possible. Um, so we're a little bit partners in crime. Um, and uh, But we also want to have the industry a little bit acknowledge this. And this goes with fairness, with uh, transparency. Um, and it goes a little bit down to, uh, yeah, to, to um, what happens uh, when you have to cancel a trip, um, uh, what, what are the fees for that, and uh, uh, what are also like um, yeah, time frames until I can uh, change my bookings. This was uh, the general overview of the markets. Now I have two slides to focus a little bit on the US and on California, because here we also see a good science and also um, figures which are quite closely to what we heard from Graham um, of uh, the share of the market or the people in the market who want to travel to a certain destination. So we see 17% of the Germans that equals 12 million people who can imagine going to the US in the next three years. And we see this is on a stable level. And when we compare um, the, the last couple of years, 18 to 21, it's even going up. So um, the, I mean, the US have always been there and they are still there and uh, going strong in the desire to travel there. And when we look at the next, next slide, that's just to, to show my uh, impression because we didn't ask for California specifically, but I think California is really combining everything the Germans are looking for in the US. So in my opinion, California is really the strongest brand, maybe together with New York. Um, but uh, from our perspective, this is even something we can ex excellently uh, combine in one trip. Um, so I think the positioning of California in this German market who is really eager to travel is really excellent. And coming to the last slide uh, with the conclusions, we see the desire is really there to travel. And with the vaccination, we have the game changer that is it's also possible now. So we are allowed to travel and we're even allowed to travel in the US very soon again. So there is really um, a lot of green traffic lights, uh, which, which are in favor of a speedy recovery of the German demand um, in the US and California. Of course, we still have to monitor the COVID situation very much and also how this affects uh, yeah, the travel planning. Um, we found out the spoiler is really if uh, there is quarantine involved, no matter if at the destination or coming back. So this is really the thing we really have to avoid. Um, what we are not so sure about on the long term trend is how the trend of uh, like at least wanting more sustainability, even if not really acting this way, will affect uh, long haul travel. So I guess this is something where in the future you have to be prepared to uh, have good arguments why still to travel to far away destinations. Um, and in general, I think that we heard before there is strong communication needed to remain a top dream destination of the German market. And I think these kind of forums and also the cooperation with the two operators and with the people who know the markets, that's really a great thing. And uh, we heard about this unique uh, competitive situation that we have right now. And uh, it's really a little bit now a race, I think, in the next few months uh, where it will be very interesting to see how everybody copes. But I think it's now well invested effort in really trying to go for the German market and also for, for other European markets. So that was me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ulf, and thank you, Graham. It's really great to see the alignment between the two perspectives. So we very much appreciate your insights. It does bring me comfort to know that German travelers will travel again. There's a lot of zest for travel in general, and they'll, uh, I personally believe they'll venture out and go on a long haul trip. I think US and California specifically is pretty well positioned um, to, to steal some of that market share. And I think there'll be great travelers for our urban core, um, but typically also have been the, the kind of travelers that venture out and see our rural communities. So um, anyway, we're gonna move into media landscape, definitely media key component to shaping um, consumer opinion and, and consumer sentiment. Um, the landscape is quite competitive as well. And we're bringing to you Holger Jacobs um, from a well-established trade publication in Germany as well um, with some of, his, um, some of his experience and some of his understanding how um, the landscape has shifted and what one needs to do to keep messages um, top of mind for German traveler. So over to you, Holger. 
Thank you, Leona, and uh, good morning, California. I would like to start with a little overview about uh, the media coverage on destinations and I divided it into four phases. Of course, the first phase started uh, with the start of the pandemic and uh, there was an uh, immediate shift in coverage from destination coverage to anything which was uh, related uh, to COVID-19, of course. So the media were not uh, talking about any destination issues anymore. It was just about bringing home stranded travelers. It was uh, about closing borders. Um, it was about uh, a bit later about uh, airline refunds for, for canceled flights. Um, the good thing in this phase was that the role of the travel agents and the tour operators was really uh, improved because they were seen as kind of emergency contacts. Uh, in a situation where people were stranded. And so this was the only good uh, news in a, in a really, in a time of doom and gloom. And actually, if it, come, if it comes to the US, uh, the US, uh, especially New York City, and we all remember that was stigmatized as a COVID-19 hotspot. So bad times for long haul travel, if it were, had been possible, it wasn't possible as we all know. On the other hand, uh, even after some, some, some weeks, we still had uh, speculation about uh, reopening of over overseas travel in the media. So there still was a lot of hope at that time. Second phase, starting in summer, we saw a slow reopening of short haul destinations. Um, the coverage in the media was, especially on those destinations which were neighboring countries to Germany, which was domestic travel. Ulf Sontag mentioned that, that a lot of uh, people travel domestically. And uh, there was also a reopening of uh, Mediterranean um, uh, destinations, which of course are the usually the best sellers uh, as regards uh, family holidays in summer. There was actually no coverage on long haul destinations at all or hardly any let's say put it that way because it wasn't just possible borders were closed uh, in both directions and uh, actually if it came to to any coverage on on uh, long haul countries uh, there was criticism on COVID-19 politics especially in Brazil uh, and also uh, unluckily in the US but the good thing is that California was seen as kind of an a positive exception out of in all that doom and gloom as it regards the COVID-19 politics. Third phase in fall and winter 2020, uh, 2020, uh, 21, uh, a setback. To be honest, uh, we had a, another lockdown in Germany. Uh, you didn't have that in, in the US, I know. Um, there was less travel co uh, coverage, of course. Um, there was even criticism, criticism in, the, in the papers, in the media, as regards some liberal countries such as Switzerland, who opened up their winter sports uh, facilities. Most countries, for example, uh, Germany and Austria didn't. And so there was, this was in the media. And on the other hand, there, there was hope uh, uh, rising for vaccines. And, and also a good, good in a, in a bad, in overall bad situation, there was a positive look on the political change in the US administration, which also has an impact on travel behavior and travel plans, of course. And now we are at the end of the fourth phase, which started in spring and summer 2021, the gradual restart and reopening of borders. There were, it started with a fierce discussion. I remember that in the media, is international travel okay? If there's still high incidence rates, is it okay to go to Majorca, for example, which is always seen as the 17th German state? Lots of people wanted to travel. Others said, don't go, it's too dangerous. Um, you endanger people there and you endanger your, your folks uh, at home. Big discussion. Um, there was, in the first weeks and months, we've seen a lot of criticism um, on the German government as regards quarantine rules, as regards entry regulations. There was a lot of to and fro. It was very difficult uh, to predict if a country um, is free for traveling or not. And uh, at the moment, it looks uh, way better. And during that time, and it started as a late spring, early summer, there, were, there was rising hope on the reopening of US borders. This also was in the media as the European Union had on their side opened borders for US travelers. So everybody was hoping for the US. Well, it took some time. Canada was first, nobody expected that. Then the US 
decided, announced that they are reopening the borders. This was big news, and there was it was really met with, I'd say, euphoria uh, in the media. Um, Tilo, who's uh, our uh, tour operator speaker here, will confirm that, I guess. Let's talk about the, the situation of the travel trade publications. First, the economic situation, as you can imagine, for us and for all our competitors, it was a big, uh, I don't know, it was a big hit. Uh, we lost all our business immediately. The, everything was canceled. All bookings, ad bookings, sponsorships, co-ops were, were, were canceled. And there, were, there weren't any new print ad bookings, uh, haven't been hardly any print ad bookings since then. Um, of course, we had our, our ways to deal with it. We, uh, we did some cost cutting uh, and, and staff was reduced, luckily not in the editorial section. Uh, we were working short hours and we still, some of us are still doing that, which is subsidized by the German government, as you might know, by, by German state aid. Um, and the good thing was uh, we shifted, and this, this is what our competitors did, uh, to digital products. Maybe we have, can have a closer look what FEW Media did as an example of the, uh, the maybe the leading uh, example of the Triple Tate Media, which would be the next slide. Um, the, we were shifting editorial capacity from print to online. We also put a much stronger in, uh, focus on the international market to international users and readers. For example, we have a, a English language news under fvw.com. You can subscribe to that for free. And it was a tiny section of our website. And now it is, has become much, much stronger, much more content, much more updated content for all of you. So please be free to subscribe to that for free. Um, on the print side, we are merging FEW and Travel Talk magazines. We had two travel, uh, two travel trade magazines before we were merging them, both the magazine and the website. And this was, of course, on the one hand, a cost cutting measure, but also it helped us um, to focus on our readers and to, to deliver what we had to deliver. A lot of coverage uh, wasn't at first, it wasn't on destinations, but it was on travel trade resilience and rising public awareness of travel trade importance. I think this is very important that um, in the public opinion, but also uh, in the travel trade in politics everywhere, uh, people noticed how important travel uh, uh, tour operators and travel agents are for selling travel, of course, especially long haul travel. We put a very strong focus on e-learnings and webinars, uh, also on uh, social media. And we were introducing our, our virtual counter days as a digital trade fair. This is a, a highly successful. And um, of course, we were all, uh, this way we were ready to, uh, to offer a customized comprehensive package with not only just print, but uh, online component, digital component, also digital event component. And of course, we had a very extensive coverage on the reopening of US borders uh, with both in print and online. We had a series of interviews with the leading tour operators and got there and spread the, spread the, spread the measure, message that there's uh, as if a switch has been turned, uh, was the saying of one tour operator uh, as regard the consumer reaction. Um, if you're looking at the, at the actual figures, uh, we had doubled our monthly user figures to 380,000 per month during the pandemic. Uh, FEW.ie, which is our online platform, our online news platform, made it into the top 10 of all trade, I'm not don't say travel trade, but all trade um, networks, all trade news platforms, which is regardless of any economic sector in Germany. Uh, we had a strong, very strong attendance of those newly invented um, digital events, for example, we had 2,000 or more than 2,000 attendance and active attendance out of the travel trade in our virtual counter days. Next issue, by the way, is going to be at the end of November. And still we kept our print subscription figures stable, which was good news. Conclusion, um, the travel trade media after 18 months of the pandemic is still going strong. And as the travel trade itself, uh, I think the media really kept their role and increased their importance uh, when it comes, came, uh, comes to communication between destinations 
and the German travel trade. This B2B communication is really a reliable channel in very uncertain and volatile times where you never really know how to reach the consumer. And that's the one, the one you want to reach in the end. And you do it via the travel trade, via tour operators and travel agents. And especially for long haul destinations, it is uh, the best way to keep in contact with potential travelers. Uh, actually, what we see, and which was one of the few good uh, things about the pandemic, that we really have enhanced our relationship with a lot of long haul destinations, even if they were not, were not uh, to be sold uh, due to uh, closed borders, but they restarted their, their uh, uh, training programs uh, via our platforms. And a last, maybe a last word to, uh, as regards California, we asked two operators, um, who's, which is gonna be the, the, the favorite destination of travelers in 2022. And that's the, the year we're, we're looking at at the moment. And it was, they said, Southwest of USA with California as the hub and highlight. And let's work on that together. I'm looking forward to it. And I'm excited to be back in California, hopefully in 2022. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Holger. Um, we appreciate your extensive coverage of US, US border reopening and certainly a shout out to California for responsibly handling the pandemic. Also really great growth of your audience on your digital property. So that's really good to see. Um, and, and you've practically set up the next um, a panel of trade experts. Um, I think we all believe that there is a renewed um, focus on travel trade. I think a lot of consumers will be looking for a trusted partner to help them navigate um, the new world of travel. Um, they'll be looking for reassurance, flexibility, and certainly clear and accurate information. Um, and that's, that's right for media as well as travel trade. So um, the last set of speakers that we bring to you today is Jens Grunberg. Um, sales and marketing manager at United Airlines, um, and he heads up all the German-speaking mar markets, and Thilo Krause, um, owner and general manager of Canusa. So here you go. I think we're going to start with Jens. Welcome. Thank you very much, Leona. <clears throat> Sorry. And uh, good morning to everyone, and greetings from Germany. Well, I think this slide says us all. Let's get reunited. And this is why we as a United Airlines and as a company whose business is to transport passengers says it all. So on the next slide, uh, you see that we're certainly making sure that 2022, summer 2022, will really be the year and the time where we can carry a lot of passengers over to San Francisco. As you will see on this chart, we have Frankfurt, we have Munich, and I have included uh, Zurich as well, because those markets are, let's say, you belong a little bit together. So Zurich will be a seasonal service starting in May, and Frankfurt will go during the summer to double daily to San Francisco. And then of course, we have daily Munich service as well. And needless to say, I mean, our business is to connect people and uniting the world. Just to give you a little idea, in 2019, we operated about 1.7 million flights and carried 162 million passengers. And that is roughly twice the population of Germany. So this opening up of the border to the US again is very important to us. And Needless to say, we're quite excited. We see the bookings coming in very strong. I mean, this is uh, really uh, surprising us a lot too. And it's just an indication that demand has been really exploding. There's no other word for it. So people are eager to go back. They're eager to see their business partner probably do new deals. What's more important, I guess, to see family, friends, and maybe take that green vacation in California and the famous, you know, create memories. And as we had before, there is money, there is desire to travel, and we will certainly be 
part of it and can help to provide the necessary transportation needs. On the next slide, you see a little bit, and it was echoed by Graham as well. So he's the funder here. Is uh, the seeds going to the to California based destinations? On the bottom line, you see our not our but the uh, service that Lufthansa is providing to San Diego. Then follow the blue line. This is LA or capacity in seats. On the left-hand side, to start in the chart, we start out January of, 19, of 2019, and on the far right, July 2022. So you see how traffic volumes past the pandemic is certainly building back up. And the dotted line that you see, this is the total capacity that Lufthansa Group from Germany and Switzerland and United together is providing from Germany to the US, in this case, particularly to California. So the spikes, or let's say the spikes that you see on the far left with the yellow arrow is, this is 2019. And as you can see in July, 2022, we will almost be back at the 2019 level in available seats to those three destinations. And what might be also nice to read, ebook is in uh, Switzerland just last week, released some data, and they looked at the uh, searches Swiss customers did on their site in regards to US destinations. And uh, number three, in searches for US was LA, and number five on that ranking was San Francisco. So it's certainly a very, very positive uh, trend that we see here for California. On the next slide, this is just the seeds in comparison. Also, again, as you see, it's Germany and Switzerland to California broken down by carriers. It's United, it's Lufthansa, and again, because we look at the Swiss market also a little bit, is our friends from uh, Swiss. The peaks that you see where the blue arrow is, and also the yellow arrow on the right, this is United capacity to San Francisco, because San Francisco is the only market that we serve uh, out of uh, Germany and Switzerland. And those are the spikes in added seat capacity because we move from a seasonal service in Munich to year round service. So that's the increase, which is also very nice to be you know, permanently in the market and not going in and out. So again here, very nice capacity. And as you can see, when you look at the dotted combined line, in this chart here, we are reaching almost the seat capacity of 2019 towards the middle of 2022. So I think a lot of very positive developments and hey, we're ready. I guess California is ready. So let's get those people over there. <laughs> And on the last slide, this is a little bit the, the sales part, my sales part, how great United is for the state of California. I mean, we see here the largest aircraft order in United's history. Yeah, it's, it's not really about, you know, just ordering a bunch of new airplanes. It's more or less also customer driven activity. It's Newer airplanes, we're putting on comfortable features. We will have in-seat video in each and every seat. So these are all things that will help also customers to choose us going to California and using our services to yeah, create their dream vacation, for example. As you can see also, adding new airplanes is also adding jobs. 
And of course, with our other hubs, we're adding jobs as well by ordering these aircrafts. But for the state of California itself, it means like up to 4,000 additional jobs in the San Francisco Bay area and up to 1,500 in the Los Angeles areas. Just to, to give you a little idea, in San Francisco, we have approximately 30,000 employees. And in the uh, Los Angeles area, we have roughly 5,000 employees. So I think it's a very nice story for the state as well. And for the customer, new airplanes, better comfort, and hey, more jobs. And according to an FAA study, on the closing here now, each direct airline job that is being created also creates roughly two jobs in secondary industries like airport management, airport retail, and also uh, aircraft manufacturing. So this is what we can do to help also California create more jobs. And I hope I give some minutes back to everyone here. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry. And of course, ah, Tilo, how could I forget this? <laughs> I'm here. As you, can tell, <laughs> as you can tell, I'm not the, uh, do this every no, week. So, uh, no, sorry. Don't worry. And, <laughs> don't worry. Yeah. And Tilo is the one who helps to fill those seats. Thank you for that. <laughs> Over to you, Tilo. Thank you very much, uh, Jens. And uh, thanks for having me. Also, uh, I must say, Leona, I'm very disappointed uh, and sad that I'm in beautiful Hamburg and not in my dream destination, California. I can promise you um, that the desire to travel your state again is incredible here. And this is not just my feeling but uh, the desire of many of our customers. And with this, uh, I want to start my impression about the German market. We are currently seeing a rapid increase in demand for travel to the USA in general, and especially to the Southwest, including, of course, mainly California. The reason for this, for sure, is the announced opening of the US borders. But also unchanged strong commitment in marketing our destinations and the positive active sales during the corona crisis has helped to keep stimulating demand for products uh, and uh, what we offer for the destination. In the last few months, we have constantly prepared customers on many different levels for the fact that the borders will open when time comes. Now we are reaping the rewards. In the first months of 21, demand was mainly dominated by rebookers, customers who already booked for the first few months of 21 and had to cancel and were willing to rebook until for uh, 22, 23. This has changed since July this year, and we are seeing more requests for new bookings. Since announcing the opening of the borders, we are currently receiving up to 50% more inquiries compared to 2019 for the 2020 season. So the demand is tremendous, and it's very diff difficult to keep up with uh, this volume. We expect this demand to continue during the coming months. Up to this level, I just talked about inquiries and not yet bookings. In terms of bookings, we still cannot look back to the strengths of 2019. However, we expect that booking behavior will also strengthen in the coming months. For 22, we expect 70 to 80% of the bookings we achieved in 2019 also for California. And for 23, we expect at least the volume of 2019. So 
the volume we had before the crisis and uh, the pandemic. We have continued to invest as a company in systems and efficiency, even during the crisis. This will allow us now to continue to be in a better position to provide intensive advice to customers in the future, what is our specialty. As a specialist for travel to North America from Germany and the German speaking countries, we want to continue to also offer a top service in future. Because we know the destinations, we can tell them where to go and where to stay. California is booked with us often in a very long in advance. Due to the late announcement of the border opening, we are now uh, trying to make up as much as possible of the already lost booking period. So it means since uh, we normally start booking for the following year in July, August, September, we now uh, started booking uh, in September when we first got the announcement that um, November might be the opening date. Due to the late announcement uh, of the border openings, we are now trying to make up as much as possible of the already lost booking period. This is possible because the advanced booking time has changed th since the corona crisis. We are currently seeing a 50% reduction of lead time before travel. This is confirmed from airline partners as well. We give the customers an increased booking security so that we again uh, move towards long-term advanced bookings. Cancellation deadlines are a significant issue and need to be discussed permanently together with our partners in the destinations. As before the Corona crisis, customers are particularly interested in discovering the beautiful and outstanding nature and national park. Here we see at this time and after the crisis, no big difference to the booking behavior before Corona. Cities also definitely, and we heard that uh, from the first or the uh, panelist uh, before me, cities are definitely belong to the programs of our clients. San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Diego, Sacramento, and many more remain on the bucket list. They want to experience the cool California way of life in those dream cities. Travelers interested in California have been unsettled in recent months by news coverage of natural disaster in the state. The media has communicated the fires, floods, and other disasters. The impact on tourism is generally difficult to measure. As the demand for California travel is currently very strong, we do not see massive influences in the near future. But here it is particularly important to keep on informing the consumers and customers uh, transparently as we did in the past. A permanent information about the situation should be carried together by all affected regions to better inform and advise about the local situation. Currently, we are seeing increased average prices as customers are interested in high quality services and standards. The reason for that might also be among uh, that people have invested less in last two years to go on long distance trips. So we see a high um, uh, uh, volume of uh, investment and capital to be spent towards long haul trips. For 22, we currently see problems in capacity, especially for hotel accommodations in national parks and for motorhomes or RVs and rental cars. 
This is another important reason to stimulate early bookings, not only for 22, but also for 23. Our goal is to start for 23 very early in 22 as well. This will stimulate customers to travel to the state who are also considering other destinations. And of course, it will secure bookings for California early. Therefore, we urge you to come up to the market early with prices for 23 as well. The German market is a very happy early booking market. Travel to California for many Germans still is a trip of the lifetime, which needs long planning phases. For some of you living in this nice state, this might be difficult to understand. But always think the other way around and how long before you or your friends and family start planning a leisure trip to Europe or Germany. Furthermore, we look forward to the marketing support as offered before the crisis and by California and California Park. We all should not underestimate this support and activities. It helps us generate more bookings and of course creates income in your state, California, because of the incremental additional business. In closing, I want to mention the most important points. Of course, positive expectation for the return of tourism to California. Any support in form of flexible booking conditions and pricing for 23 is welcome. And early marketing in Germany to secure bookings. We are very happy to be able to talk to you about all these issues today and to be much more optimistic about the coming months and years. Because of its safety in all areas, the fascinating nature and the wonderful people and much more, we can predict a lot of demand for California from the German market. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, Tilo. Um, I think you have also in your presentation answered Hubertus' question, Hubertus's question about what to expect in terms of the demand if we are expecting traditional demand and or if um, a travel will be realized as early as Q1 2022. So we did not leave a lot of time for questions. I'm going to try to squeeze in one that I see in the Q&A chat. It's more along the lines of um, MICE by Paul Tam Tam Tambakis, Emerald Tours in Mission Viejo, California. He is seeing quite a bit of interest for incentive travel here domestically and specifically for golf product. Anyone has expertise and or um, can answer whether we, we might be seeing more incentive travel out of Europe. That might be for you, Martin. Yeah, um, it's not an easy market to be actually honest. Um, we have worked in the mice and incentive market in the past, or in the in the years before uh, the start of the pandemic. Um, I think uh, with high end companies and and uh, them hosting smaller groups or um, including golf is definitely something that is uh, worthwhile exploring. It is seasonal, however, so the traditional um, getaways for golfers, which I'm actually a part of, and Tilo actually also is, is the winter because Germans play at home in summer. So it is perfect for California. And we have seen, um, and we do have a, a certain number of golf tour operators in the market that work this market. I think it's very specific and, um, yeah, you probably better to reach out to us and my team individually because it's a little, it's it's complicated and it would take very long to explain all details, but I'm happy to help and we're happy to point into the right direction. Excellent. Well, I'm gonna thank you guys all. Um, this was, like we said, 
full of amazing insights, um, incredibly aligned, definitely illustrated the pent up demand that we believe is in Europe, a lot of competition. So us DMOs and, and um, other partners, we have to do our jobs. You gave us a lot of direction on that, how to be successful in German markets. So with that, thank you all very, very much for your time this afternoon.